Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. It reads, And he put all things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So be careful. Jesus is the same as the church. You can't love Jesus but not the church. You can't separate the head from the body. If you're serious about following Jesus, then you have to be serious about meeting Sundays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Please, let's read now Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. It says, Passing along the, alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. The disciples, John and James, both of them, they were working. With who? With their dad. They were working. What were they doing? Fishing. Then Jesus saw them. He went over to meet them. He said, come, follow me. Both of them, they followed him. They followed Jesus. Both of them. They didn't worry about how many things they needed to do, perhaps, or how were they going to eat, or even their family business. They were not fearful about the future, but both of them decided to follow Jesus. They even left their father in the boat. Now, we got to trust in God. So, we need to decide first, are we going to follow Jesus? For example, true story, we were very excited because we got some tickets, some free tickets to watch a baseball game in City Field, the new stadium. So I was excited to go over there, but there was a conflict with the time. So we talked about what are we going to do? What should we do? We decided, you know what, we got to go to Devo. we got to go to VBS because it's more important to be with the church. So I was a little sad about that at the beginning. We recently had gone to a seminar, and I said to Pedro, oh, we don't need to go. You know, we're married. We don't need to go to a marriage seminar. But my husband encouraged me, look, we need to encourage one another at the seminar. And I was patient. I said, fine. So we both went to this marriage seminar. And wow, you know, we had such a great time. I felt that I grew so much in my faith just from attending. And also, our marriage just improved and came to a point that I didn't know it could be. So if we're not having our first attention of, on Jesus, are we really going to grow in our faith? Therefore, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 reads, Encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. So you, you know, keep that in mind. It will make you grow. It will make you strong in the faith. And you also will be able to do a lot of things. First, keep encouraging one another. Number two, don't, don't let something be a burden on your faith, but hope and give hope. Be excited about Jesus coming back. And number three, encourage one another. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. Maybe you're thinking, well, I need to encourage Clara. You know, she's talking about how she doesn't have that many encouragement. Don't worry about me. Look, I'm just sharing my experience with you so that you can encourage others. And I'm not saying this so that you can come and encourage me or learn sign language. I want to encourage you to have faith, to strengthen those whose faith are weak. It doesn't matter. Just keep encouraging them. Don't become sad about it. If you try to do it and they don't learn, don't depend on them, you know, help them, encourage them to depend on Jesus. You keep going, you keep smiling, don't let your happiness depend on other people's faith but your own. Sometimes 
some sisters, you know, they want to be by themselves. They don't want to be with one another. You want to be by yourself, but what's going to happen is that you're going to focus on your own feelings. You should be with the fellowship. That's how we get to focus on the right things. Showing love to one another every day. How? Encouraging one another. Giving gifts. Accepting gifts. Also, teaching each other to obey God fast. Don't delay. Don't give excuses. You know, it's encouragement is better than criticism. I'm going to share with you this verse in Mark chapter 4, verse 22, where it says, Nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. You know, between encouragement and criticism, what's the difference? Well, whatever is hidden is going to be uncovered. If you try to keep something secret, it will be uncovered. That's why you don't want to judge people. If you don't know something, don't judge about it. It's very easy to become critical, to judge, because that's what the heart's inclination is to do, especially if you're tired or bored or self-focused. It's harder to turn that and to show love and edify each other. If you want to show love and you want to edify each other, you got to think. Look at the prayer list. See what people are praying about. Think. And let God do the judging. If you judge, you got to judge according to the Bible. If things are unclear to you, if you cannot understand what something's happening, don't say anything. You know, don't be critical about it. It's, if it's very clear what's being shown to you. And instead of judging, just think about how you're going to encourage that person. Many people watch TV, for example. They see bad things happening. Maybe they're critical of the governor or the president. No, but you don't know everything. Instead, show love. How? By praying, as the Bible says. Praying for the president. Praying for one another. Let's summarize. Encourage each other every day until Jesus comes back. You encourage and you will help to stop sinning. You encourage to love one another, to do good deeds. You encourage to help you not be critical or complain. You encourage to help you focus on God. How do we practice these things? What are some practicals? Well, for example, I want you to tell me if I sin. Call me or email me or text me. More practicals. Think about how you need to think. What do you need to do, for example, to encourage people? You could cook something, make a nice fruit basket, or you can visit those who are sick, visit your family members. Invite them over to your house, cook for them, serve them. Or maybe a sister is missing the services a lot. You can call her, tell her how much you miss them, be sincere, ask her how she's feeling. If it's a new sister and she looks like she's all alone, go and talk to her, encourage her, introduce yourself. Tell her who you are. And... If the sister is sad, she seems to be carrying a heavy burden, go over, pray with her, tell her that you've been praying for her. When you do all these things, and when you're busy thinking about how to encourage, you're not giving your heart a reason to be critical or to give excuses. There's no reason to be sad. God bless you.